Good morning, everybody. It is so nice to be back. I just want to say uh, just a quick thank you to everybody who uh, filled in for my absence the last two weeks. I was visiting my family in Illinois, so it was a very nice trip, but glad to be back. Welcome. If you have not been here before, welcome. If you're here in person or online, let's start our service by singing. What are we singing? House thank you. We're, we're going to sing House of the Lord. Here we go. <laughs> traveled in Europe a little bit with my family, so it's wonderful to be with you all. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we're grateful to have you, and if you just keep coming back, keep doing it, and I'm glad to be with you. I want to say thanks to Pastor G-Sun, Pastor Cricket, uh, to all those who've led while I've been away and, and carried the load of pastoral leadership, as well as Jessica and the band and everyone. Thank you so much. You all are the church, amen? amen. And uh, it takes partnership to do this together. I welcome folks worshiping with us online. We are grateful for you wherever you may be. 
Hopefully you're enjoying the sun and the beauty of the summer. Um, for folks online, you can go to haddonfieldumc.org slash now for all of our announcements and the sermon notes for today. I just have a couple real quick announcements. Um, the first is that uh, we are going to bless a group of kids going on a mission trip this week. On Wednesday, our youth group is going to give kids the world, which is a place that that uh, works with uh, wish families, like Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, in uh, Orlando outside of Disney World. And uh, they're going to help care for those uh, families and offer hospitality. We're going to commission them in this service. But if you want to help raise money to cover the expenses of their trip, there are envelopes up in the Welcome Center that they have decorated. And we call this Hope in an Envelope, that if you take, uh, if you take an envelope that says 131, that means that you just fill that with $131 either check or cash, and you can return it to us either in the offering or give it to Pastor Cricket. Um, and there are, I think, all kinds of dollar amounts on those tables. Just grab one, fill it with the number, and return it, and that will help defray their costs of this mission trip. Um, for anyone who's new with us in the last few weeks or months and are interested in joining or learning about membership in our church, we're going to have two new member classes, one on July 28th and one on August 1st. If you'd like to find out information on that, it's on page eight of the bulletin. Those are one-time only classes, so you, get, you can choose July 28th or August 1st. Come out at one o'clock in the room upstairs, uh, Sarah Pavilion, and, uh, and then you'll join a week or two later in the church. Um, also, we have Stephen ministers at this church, which are trained lay people for listening and praying and accompanying people who are going through difficult seasons in their life. If you would like to receive a Stephen minister, someone to talk with weekly or to pray with you or accompany you in a difficult situation, you can find information about how to get a, a Stephen minister on page nine of your bulletin. As we go forward in worshiping God together, I invite you to join your heart with mine and prayer and and pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this space and for each person who's gathered here. God, may your love be made real to us and through us. Receive our worship, and we just pray for a double portion of your spirit to blow among us and help us to, to go forth from this experience, strengthened, encouraged, and bold, emboldened to love and to serve you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Is there anybody in this room that worries? worries about all the little stuff. I think there's there's always a reason for everything happening, and boy, did I uh, realize that in my travels. As a specific airline thought it would be funny to like cancel a flight when I have my kids with me, and then we had to stay in a hotel, and then we had to get up the next morning, only to find out that the flight was canceled again the next morning, and then we had to wait all day for another flight. So, but there's always a purpose for that, right? There's always a purpose for the plan. And I think it gained us a little bit extra family time, a little bit more experience to be flexible. So there's, there's always something happening in the background. And we just have to trust and know that someone else is in charge. Just take it calmly. Have you ever skipped down one of those runways in the middle of the airport that keeps moving, you know, even though you're not, you're not moving, it's moving, right? It's just straight. So I got to do that with my daughter. It was very fun. We were skipping on that. See, I wouldn't have gotten that experience if they didn't cancel the flight. So it, it was great. It was a great time. It's kind of how this song is. It's talking about all these little great things that can happen. It's just you have to trust the plan. So let's stand together and sing. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter what. Freedom, here we go. Freedom, the 
after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. As I mentioned in our greeting uh, on Wednesday, we have a group of our junior high and senior high mission our youth groups that are going to be going to Orlando to give kids the world. We have a legacy and a number of years of sending folks there. And uh, this is going to be a first time for many of our youth who are going. And so I want to invite them. If you guys can come on up on stage, we're going to offer a prayer for our team. Pastor Cricket is going to be leading them with other adults. And uh, how many youth are going? Seven youth and how many adults? Five. And five adults. And so these are uh, some of those folks who are going to be going uh, with us. We have more. Come on up. And I'm going to ask if Pastor g Sun will offer a prayer over our team. And we invite you, if, if you would uh, be willing, put your hand out as a sign of laying on hands of our team. Well, loving and gracious God, thank you so much for our youth mission team who is willing to go and serve your people and share uh, your love and mercy to each of them. Bless their journey together. Keep watch over them in and out, and let them be the sign of your love and hope to people, every people they will meet during the week. Let them be the best team ever. Let them grow in your love. Let your love reign over them and unite them with your one spirit. Oh, Lord, we pray and we support them as a community of faith. Oh, Lord, help us to be, a pray, be in prayers for them each and every day as they uh, be the mission, missionary uh, in Florida during the week. Oh, Lord, remember each of them by their names and bless their heart and mind and spirit. We pray all these in the name of Jesus, our Christ, who loves us more than we can imagine. Amen. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Just real quick. How many of you are, this will be your first time? Okay, we have a couple. And how many of you have gone before? That leaves the rest of you. So those, <laughs> those of you who have gone before, what's the one thing that they have to look forward to the most? Just have fun? Just have fun? Stuff. Stuff? <laughs> I thought you were going to say ice cream. So. Ice cream. <laughs> and those of you who are going the first time, what are you the most excited about? Everything? Every, we have very specific answers. <laughs> well, the good news is I'll give you a week to think about it. When you come back, you can tell us all about it. And I think they're going to produce a video and share some of their uh, experiences. But uh, send them your love and support uh, if you see them before we leave today. And go with our blessing and, uh, and have fun and be safe. All right, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm so glad to see you, and I'm so grateful as we send off uh, them to the mission journey. And I'm so excited how uh, to see how God will lead them each and every moment, and God will be with them uh, each and every moment. And at this moment, I want us to create a space 
to be with God with our deep heart. I don't know where you are on your life journey, but our God knows our joy and our pain and our sorrow, and God is listening to us. And so why don't we take a moment of silence by closing our eyes, taking a deep breath. Lift up your heart and join your heart with mine in prayer. A loving and gracious God, we are so grateful for this morning as you call us to be here and to learn from you and to experience your goodness. As we shout out, your goodness has been with us. You have been so good, good to us. On our sunny days and rainy days, and with every breath we are able, we praise your name and we praise who you are and who we are. We are so grateful for every moment given to us to love and to serve. We are so grateful for every person and community sharing our lives with each other. We are so grateful for your presence in and among us. Your love and mercy have already been, have been at work from the beginning of the world. You have been at work in and among us even before we are aware of it. We come to you as we are. We long for your healing and your guidance. We come to you with our worries and fears. We come to you as with our anxieties. Because you are our creator, savior, and sustainer. And Lord, restore us and renew us and made us whole. Give us wisdom to know who you are and whose we are each and every day you know our hearts before we say a word you know our needs and you are enough pro pro provider oh lord we lift up our prayers for our family and friends and for ourselves grant your healing and restoration to your children who are going through various medical difficult situations grant your peace and comfort surpassing all our understanding to your children who are grieving from their loved ones. Oh Lord, we need you. Open our eyes and to, to see you. Open our ears to hear you, to shape us on the journey of becoming the disciples of Jesus you are called us to be. We want to know you in our own experience. We want to experience the mystery of faith. Grant your hope in our despair. Grant your strength in our weakness. Grant your joy in our sorrow. We pray for those who are traveling in this season. We pray for those who are in transition. We pray for those who are searching for new opportunities in their lives. We pray for peace in the world. Lord, hear our prayers and have mercy on us. And hear our prayers and have mercy on us. We lift up all our hopes and dreams. We lift up our plans before you. Guide us and teach us and lead us. We pray all these, our spoken and unspoken prayers of heart. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, who taught us how to pray, and we pray together with the word that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. The word of God for us today is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then... I am strong. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, it really is good to be back with you here. Um, as I mentioned in, in the welcome, I've been away for about three weeks. And yesterday I got on a plane in Germany. Uh, it was a nice, cool 62 degrees, and I stepped out of the airport in Newark, New Jersey, and it was a nice 92 degrees. We are, uh, anyone enjoying the heat wave here? <laughs> Summer is a wonderful time, um, but with it comes heat waves, and unfortunately with heat waves come uh, brush fires, right, and wildfires. We're already, we've already seen some wildfires, I think, in New Jersey in the last couple weeks. Uh, California, in the last few years, there have been devastating wildfires. In Australia, last year, does anyone remember the smoke from Canada that came down? I know there have already been some Canadian wildfires. Um, And of course, wildfires, the most common cause of wildfires, does anyone know what it is? Lightning. Lightning. And wildfires, believe it or not, are a very important and a natural part of the life cycle of, of forests. But it's, it's always devastating. We don't want to see anyone lose lives or homes. And of course, it's devastating to see animals and wildlife lose their homes and to see the loss of beautiful trees. I always grieve when I see wildfires, not only for the human threat, but also for the loss of creation. I did not know the word serotonous until the last, let's say, year. Does anyone know the word serotonous? So there is, I did not know, but in the Jersey Pinelands, as well as pine forests across the United States and other parts of the world, pine cones and some seeds that are known as serotonous. Serotonous pine cones, like the, the scrub pine, the brush pine, the pond pine, and the gray pine here in New Jersey, and then something called the lodgepole pine in the southeast of the United States. These pine cones do not open. You know, when you see a pine cone, it has these open ridges. They do not open unless they are exposed to fire or heat. And the way it's been bioengineered is that the pine cones of these trees are covered in a thick resin or sap. And so it's not until they're exposed to heat that that sap melts away. And when it melts away, they open up and voila, the seeds go into the earth. It's just as though 
God the Creator engineered these pine cones to repopulate the forests and to keep life going even in the face of tragedy or of forest fires. Now, serotonous seeds function the same way that they're, they're, they're seeds released into the ground by trees, but not until they are exposed to heat until the resin melts away from them and they can germinate. And so in the midst of devastation and fire, because of these pine cones and seeds, there is new life. Well, in the passage that, that Tom just read from 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, in weakness, strength. And I think about these pine cones, in fire, life. I want to talk about that. Have any of you experienced the fires and the trials of life? Have you ever felt like all was lost? In weakness, strength. In fire, new life. Well, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, this, this, what was read today is called 2 Corinthians. Um, it's actually, we believe, the third letter that he wrote to the church in Corinth, if not the fourth letter. Now, have any of you heard 1 Corinthians 13? We, we often call that the... The love chapter, if you've ever gone to a wedding or a funeral or watched a TV show, um, the, the love chapter kind of represents the Corinthians. But I just want to say, I want to uh, kind of clear the air. It wasn't all love fest between Paul and the church of Corinth. 1 Corinthians 13 is beautiful. Love is patient. Love is kind. But by the time we get to what we call the second letter to the Corinthians, we find that there was significant conflict between Paul and the church of Corinth. After his first letter, he returned to Corinth, but he had to leave very quickly because apparently there was a conflict. We can only read between the lines. And in, in 2 Corinthians, he says, in my previous letter, which we don't have, because all the references he makes, we don't have those references. And so he's trying to, to mitigate this conflict that they had some sort of misunderstanding. He didn't live up to their expectations. Paul had this huge reputation. And apparently, according to 2 Corinthians, they didn't think he was the greatest speaker. They didn't think he was particularly eloquent. He didn't sound very educated. And he was not as uh, magnanimous as they expected him to be. And instead, there were other people that were saying, steer clear of this Paul guy. Now, there's one word that appears, I think, more than any other word in this letter, 2 Corinthians. Do you know what the word is? It's boast. The word boast appears 21 times in this short little letter. The word Jesus appears 20 times. So what we know is that the people struck a nerve with Paul. They said, you have a big ego. That was one of the big parts of, of the complaint, is they said that he was boasting about his experiences. And so when he writes them back in this letter, Paul says, I'm not boasting, right? I only boast in my weaknesses. And he says, I know a guy that experienced God's presence and went to the seventh, he seventh heaven, and I will boast about him, and I will boast about people who have amazing experiences, but I'm not boasting about my education, although I'm educated, he says. I'm not boasting about my Roman citizenship, although I have it. I'm not boasting about all these amazing things I've done, although I have. But I'm boasting about the fact that I'm the chief among sinners, that I made a lot of mistakes, that I sentenced people to death, that I have even a problem in my body that I can't get rid of, and God continues to work. I will only boast, Paul says, in weakness. Now, Paul was addressing conflict and tension between himself and the church in Corinth, in which many accused him, as I mentioned, of bragging or boasting. But he says the only thing he can boast of is how God makes us strong in weakness. Now he says to keep him humble as proof of his own journey with humility. He says that God gave him a thorn in the flesh. Now, there have been two millennia of speculation as to what that means. We, we don't know what that thorn in the flesh was, whether it was literal or, or whether it was... Uh, you know, a mental issue or a psychological issue. Some people have speculated that he may have had MS or Parkinson's disease. He may have had a, a limp. Think of all the common things that, that we uh, 
experience or can easily diagnose or treat today. Maybe he had gout. We don't know what he had, but what he says is that he prayed to God three times. The prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. God, if you can take this cup from me, please do it. He says he prayed three times. God, take this thorn away. Maybe he had a tremor. Maybe he couldn't walk. Maybe he had a stammer in his speech. God, take this away from me. And he says, you know, each time I prayed, I heard this from God. My grace is sufficient for you. So instead of being relieved of his physical ailment, the message he received was that grace can overcome and overpower our greatest challenges. Have you heard of the phrase, the obstacle is the way? Maybe you've heard me talk about a book called The Obstacle is the Way. It's uh, a book based, it's kind of a modern leadership book, but it's based on Marcus Aurelius, um, the, the great Greek leader uh, who, who overcame all kinds of calamities and war and pestilence and famine to be known as one of the great leaders in history. And Marcus Aurelius coins this phrase, the obstacle is the way, which means that the challenge is not something that we run from or go around, but it becomes the particular opening in which we find our new, our next success or our prosperity. Now, the, the book, The Obstacle is the Way, uh, kind of relies on the tradition of Stoicism. Does anyone know about Stoicism? I know in the United States, we, uh, I grew up hearing that all the farmers and where I grew up, they're Stoic, right? They're men of few words and, and kind of uh, they're hardworking. Well, Stoicism is a little more than being Stoic. Stoicism is an actual philosophy, a Greek philosophy, and there are three movements to Stoicism. And before I go through that, I, I want to share with you an example that kind of illustrates the obstacle is the way. Did anyone here see Taylor Swift in concert? Oh. No, no Swifties here? And anyone listen to Taylor Swift's music? Well, well definitely the Heckert House plays a, a decent amount of Taylor Swift. Right? And people ask me all the time, come on, what's, she doesn't sound much different than anyone else. What, what is with this Taylor Swift? And I'm not an apologist, and I'm not here to, to kind of back anything up or, or to prove anything. But the author of the book, The Obstacle is the Way, uses Taylor Swift as a way to illustrate what he means, the obstacle is the way. Well, Taylor Swift achieved billionaire status just in the last six months. Because of her epic world tour, she's continuing to tour and to sell out places. She was actually in England when I was in England, and in Europe right before I got to Europe. And uh, Taylor Swift has, I believe, sold more music than the Beatles, and has sold out or performed to more people than almost any other artist in our day and age. But what makes her a good illustration for the obstacle is the way is that uh, about a little less than 10 years ago, Taylor Swift had developed a pretty solid canon of pop music, chart scoring music that was sold out from under her to a producer with whom she did not have a good relationship. So someone else now earned money off of her music, controlled it, got to license it, regardless of what she wanted. So she did not own her own masters or her own canon. And that, for an artist, can be kind of a career-ending thing. And it has ended the career of many bands and many good artists. Well, Kelly Clarkson, anyone ever heard of Kelly Clarkson? You may know her as a TV show host before that, and still she's also a pop artist. Kelly Clarkson tweeted that Taylor should re-record all of her albums and sell them all over again, and then she would own her music. Well, guess what she did? She has re-recorded almost all, not all, but almost all of her albums, and she continued to make new music. I believe she's created four albums just since the pandemic. And so what he's saying was she could have pulled away or backed down but the opportunity was the challenge. The challenge was she didn't own her music. And so what she did was she 
took a hold of that opportunity, did what Kelly Clarkson said, and she re-recorded all of that music, which has given, kind of given more fuel to the fire of her fandom and has shot her through the roof. And it also then gave birth to this whole tour called the Eras Tour. Well, again, I'm not here to be a Swifty apologist, but I want to point to this idea, the obstacle is the way. When we face challenges, we can see them as the opportunity for our next season, or we can deflate. Stoicism has three movements to it. When you face an obstacle, the first movement is called amor fati. And amor fati means literally love fate. And it would mean, what it really means is embrace the cards you've been given. So in the Swift uh, example, okay, she lost access to her canon of music, control to that music. Don't say, woe is me. Don't complain about it. Don't fall in. Embrace your fate. This is what you have. If you're in a car accident, right? You, one of the first things that you can do when you're in a car accident is, oh, I can't believe this happened to me. You know, why do bad things always happen? I, now I'm going to have to this, and I'm going to miss work, and blah, 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 blah. Amor Fati says, stop. Don't judge it as good or judge it as bad. Judge it as is. This has happened. What are you going to do about it? So the second step of Stoicism is action. Take action. Don't sit down. Don't fall apart. But this is what you have been given, and the real question is, what are you going to do with what you've been given? Take action. The third movement of Stoicism is will. Will is what gives you drive on the gas pedal, and you apply your own will to push through the challenges. And this, my dear friends, is where I believe that Stoicism and the message of Paul the Apostle diverge one from another. Both agree the, of amor fati, that whatever challenge we experience, we accept and we ask God to use it. We also take action, loving action, but instead of applying our own human will, what Paul does and what Paul tells us to do is to turn over our will to God. Rather than stressing human will in the face of, of challenge, Paul teaches us to turn over our will in weakness to God. I don't know about you all, but I don't always have the will that I wish that I did. I don't always have the willpower. I don't always have the motivation. I don't always have the strength. I don't always have the creativity. I don't always have the ideas to get myself out of a challenge or a problem that I'm in. And what Paul teaches us to do is that in weakness, that's not when we have to be stronger. In weakness, God is already strong. Thanks be to God that when my life feels like a scorched out desert of fire in which all the trees of my own vision and my own idea and my own plans have been burned down to the ground, I don't have to replant the forest. God is activating the seeds that already have been planted. I remember a number of years ago, about 10 years ago or so, I was going through a, a really significant challenge in my life. And I, and I wrote, one of the ways I handled it was I wrote in a journal, and I remember these words, a prayer is a seed that we plant in cold and barren ground. Because sometimes when we pray, we might not even have any hope that that prayer is going to come to be. We're like Paul, God, remove this, this wound in the flesh from me. God, remove this challenge from me. Sometimes when we say those words, we don't even have any idea or imagination that it's even possible. It's like dropping ground in a scorched out forest fire. But when we turn over our weakness and our challenges and our frailties to God, we experience what Paul experiences. That I don't have to get myself out of a situation that God's grace is enough for me. How many of you have ever experienced a failure of will or the burning down of dreams or plans in your life? Just raise your hand. Have ever, any of you ever felt that way, kind of out of control in a situation? That this, this is not what I signed up for. Anyone ever feel that way? This is not what I signed up for. I remember uh, 
when I was in college, now I knew I wanted to go into ministry. I was working as a youth director at my home church. I was asked to lead a men's retreat, a, a United Methodist men's retreat. And I, I went to that retreat. It was by a, a lake or by a river. And I had all these guys that I'd grown up with. They were my dad's age and older. And I, I asked all these guys to write on a piece of paper, what's one challenge that you wish you could overcome? And I remember that, that there was a, a member of that group that wrote my eyesight. And when I looked at that piece of paper, I thought, you know, I, I never thought about this guy as, as having a struggle. And, and it turns out that it, he lived with legal blindness and, and journeyed with that, but overcame it, and no one around him would really think that that was an ongoing challenge. And what it reminded me of in an early age is that people are always carrying burdens that we don't know about. Do you know that? People are always struggling in ways that we just don't know. I struggle in ways, and I know you struggle in ways, and the good news is that my will does not have to prevail. Amen? The good news is that I don't have to overcome all of my challenges on my own. What I am called to do is to plant seeds in a burned-out forest. What I'm called to do is to plant seeds of faith and prayer and turn over my weakness to God and to allow God's grace to be sufficient for me. Friends, whatever you're carrying, whatever you're walking through, and whoever you're supporting on this journey, know this, that we can embrace what we have been given and we should take loving action. But at the end of the day, all God asks for us to do is to turn over our burdens, our struggles, our dreams, and our cares to God and allow God's grace to be sufficient for us. Amen. Yeah, sure. That was good. Whoever that was, be vulnerable, right? Be the first person to clap. I'm proud of you. We're glad you guys are having you. <laughs> Friends, in our moments... When we are vulnerable and uncertain, that's when God's strength shines most brightly through us. To help us to have the attitude of amor fati, to embrace our fate. When we give, we are not only offering our resources, we are acknowledging our reliance on God's strength. In our weaknesses, we find the opportunity to lean into God's grace and be vessels of God's love and generosity. Let your offering be a symbol of your trust in God's unfailing strength and provision. The ushers will come around now to collect your tithes and offerings, or you can give electronically through our app, by text, or online at haddonfieldumc.org slash give. Once a month in our service here, we return to this table, which is the greatest expression of strength that comes from weakness, God's power to overcome human frailty, even to the point of death, and turn it into a sign of grace for the world. Here at this table, we who are different, who are many, we become one, not because of what we can do or what we have done, but because who God is and because of the power of God's love. I want to welcome our kids to be a part of this communion experience, and uh, this is an open table to all. All we need to do is to enter it through willingness 
and through confession. Would you please join your heart with mine? A loving and gracious God, thank you so much for calling us to be here to receive your love and grace, providing us on this, uh, on this table. Lord, thank you so much for your grace sufficient to us to bring us back, to forgive us as we humbly and honestly come to you. you your grace is enough to turn our shortcomings and our failure and mistake into something new and something beautiful and lead us to the transformation of our hearts and lives. Oh Lord, bless our hearts and forgive us and use us to be the sign of your love and hope in the places where we are. We thank you so much for everything, O oh Lord. Your grace is sufficient. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We remember at this table that Jesus took bread and gave it to his disciples, said, this is my body broken for you. Each time you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. That Jesus took the cup and he blessed it before God and then gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink it, remember me. Friends, will you pray with me? Oh, loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and wine and for each person here gathered around this table. Pour out your spirit now on these gifts that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may become the body of Christ redeemed by his blood as we are one in ministry to the world. Make us one, O oh God. Make us one with you, with each other, and with all of your creation as we join our hearts and lives in service and ministry in the name of Jesus. We pray this in the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Amen. Friends, our communion table is open to all, to all. Every person God has created and called into communion, all we need to have or to do is to be willing and desirous of a relationship with God and one another. We're going to have two stations here today, uh, and you can come forward as the ushers direct you. You can receive a piece of the bread, which is gluten-free, and dip it into the grape juice, which is alcohol-free, and then you can return to your seat. As always, we do have pre-sealed, um, gluten-free, and alcohol-free uh, communion elements. If you would prefer to take those, you can get those in the middle. So now, all those who hunger and thirst to be in union with God, come and be filled. I love you, Lord. All your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been the goodness of God, of your voice, you have led me through the fire, in darkest night, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am. 
will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is right enough to, it's right enough to me. Your goodness is right enough to, it's right enough to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. So good, every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of Blessing and honor and glory are yours now and forever.
Will you stand with me as we sing our final song today? Two, three, four. for you. Let us go and experience, receive, and share that grace as we leave this place to be the church in a hurting world. Go in peace. The weak need the strong and the strong need the weak. We've all got something missing and we're all the missing piece. The strong need the weak and the weak need the strong. Searching for an answer that's been here all along. God knows people need, people need, people need people. To the Father, there's nothing better than when the kids all come together. People need, people need, people need people. When there's nothing but love between us, we can finally start to see what God knows. People need, people need, people need people. People need, people need, people need people.